Okay, it's time to get rolling. I want to take this opportunity to um, give a warm welcome. Everybody joining us today, this is our top 10 stock pick sneak preview event. It's Monday, November 11th, 2019. You get John Hopkins here of Earnings Beats. Going to be joined by my partner, Tom Bowling, just shortly for the um, main event. We have a lot of new members here today. I want to thank you for taking the time to stop in. We have a lot of members been with us a long time as well. Thank you for stopping by and all the support you give us and have given us uh, over the years. <clears throat> today, we're going to be focusing on an event that's coming up a week from tomorrow which is a top 10 stock picks event where Tom Boley will unveil his top 10 model, aggressive and in income stocks. Today is an event open to everyone in our community. That includes our subscribing members, our earnings, be earnings digest members. Next week will be a member only event because we're gonna be talking about a lot of stocks. We're gonna be going over uh, content that is reserved for subscribers. So you'll have an opportunity for not already a member to join. And uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things I'll do before I turn it over to Tom, I do this, anybody who comes into these events knows. I'm gonna share something real quick so we can get started. You're gonna see our Earnings Beats webinar special. We do this every time we have an event like this. It's gonna be the best deal you get because instead of a monthly membership, this encompasses a full year. You'll be able to go right to our website, earningsbeats.com. At the top, you'll see webinar special. This will show you everything you're gonna get if you decide to become an annual member. You think you're gonna be with us, you know, for more than a couple months, it's the way to go. And uh, the one thing I do wanna point out, um, this, our exclusive relative strength industry groups chart list. This is something only avail available to our annual members. And this is something Tom put together, which is awesome. It's every industry chart, 104 industry charts that updates real time. Once you have the list, you have it for as long as you want. And um, that's why we make it only available to our annual members. The other thing I wanna say is the Strong Earnings chart list is 140 stocks. We're in the process of updating it. <laughs> I think it should be updated tomorrow, Wednesday at the latest number of stocks coming off, quite a few being added. So for our members, uh, you'll be hearing from us. For those of you who we've been sharing with or stock charts extra or higher level members, we'll share the list with you. And for others, we'll get the link to you. That'll happen uh, between tomorrow and Wednesday. And then again, uh, we've got our big event coming up um, next Tuesday. You'll be hearing more. Uh, about that as well. All right, on that note, I want to get this thing started. I know Tom you know, has a lot to cover. Um, doesn't need much of an announcement. You know Tom either from stockcharts.com or earnings beats. He's our chief market strategist and uh, he's going to come in right now and um, get the meat of this program going. Okay, Tom, it's all yours, my friend. All right, sounds good. Good afternoon, everybody, or good evening, or good morning, wherever you are. Um, this is our sneak preview to the um, top 10 stocks. Uh, this is done every 90 days. Uh, it started almost a year ago. In another week, it'll be one year that we started doing this. Um, we had tremendous success right out of the gate. <clears throat> and essentially, what we try to do is put together a portfolio. Let me go ahead and share here. 
All right, you should have my screen up now. Um, what we try to do with these portfolios is put together a group of 10 stocks. So there's, there's a model portfolio, there's an aggressive portfolio, and there's an income portfolio. Uh, the model portfolio started about a year ago, Earnings Beats members, you know, we would have this strong earnings chart list. And as John was showing over 140, well, actually, as of tomorrow or Wednesday, we're, I'm in the process of updating it today. I've just about got it done and we'll be sharing it with everyone. Uh, there's going to be over 300 stocks on there. And when we get through next week, because we've got another decent sized week this week of earnings, I'll, I'll try to update again over the weekend. We should have the highest number of stocks on this strong earnings chart list than, than we've ever had. And I think that speaks volumes about the earnings season, how it's gone, why the stock market is at an all-time high, because there are a lot of stocks technically that look like they should be bought. And the more companies that we have on this list, I think the more confirmation we're getting about the future and which way the stock market's going. I think it's going a lot higher. So every 90 days I go through and I look for the 10 stocks for each of these portfolios. And like I said, about a year ago, members were looking at the strong earnings chart list and they're saying, well, you've got a couple hundred stocks on here. You know, I, don't, I can't buy a couple hundred stocks. What are your, what are your five or 10 favorites? And that's how the model portfolio was born. Um, I went through and just looked for 10, you know, the best five or 10 that I liked. Um, but I didn't want to get them all in one area of the market. I didn't want to get five software stocks or three software stocks and three semiconductor stocks to go with maybe two restaurant stocks because then those groups go down. You've got, you know, all your eggs in, in just a couple of baskets. So what we've tried to do, what I've tried to do through this process is put together a top 10 for each of these portfolios, but all of them coming in different industry groups. They can be within the same sectors, but they're in different industry groups. And the idea there is, number one, I like to make a call on which way I think the market's going. If I think the market's going higher and I'm bullish, I'm not going to be putting a whole lot of defensive sector stocks into these portfolios. I'm going to be aggressive because those are the types of stocks that will outperform the S&P 500 as we go forward. Um, and I'll go through the performance this last quarter because this quarter was very, very challenging. It was unlike any of the others. And I think I've got a couple of charts that'll help to explain a little bit about that. But if you look at that, this is through Friday's close. I can tell you today was actually a very good day for the model portfolio and the aggressive portfolio. Um, hadn't seen day like this in a while, to be honest. But uh, as of Friday's close, you can see the model portfolio since November 19th of 2018, that's when this started the model portfolio is up almost 40%. Uh, the S&P 500, uh, about 15%. So that's 25 percentage points out performance over the course of one year, one week shy of a year, which I think is pretty impressive, despite the fact that this past quarter was very challenging and we gave that we had built um, year to date heading into this latest quarter. But I think that's a pretty impressive um, uh, chart. Uh, the one thing I'm not overly impressed by, and you know, hopefully the next quarter will change all that, is you can see the S&P 500 breaking out the new highs, and the model portfolio did not. Again, there are reasons for it. I'll talk about those in just a minute. The aggressive portfolio, as of Friday, this, the, this portfolio began back on uh, May 19th. And the aggressive and the income portfolios it just came out of the success of the model portfolio. Again, members were asking about, you know, how about if we were trying to get more aggressive? I mean, I know these are your 10 favorite stocks, but how about some small stocks in there? How about some, some uh, you know, some stocks, some, some companies where we're going to roll the dice a little bit more? And that's how the aggressive portfolio was born. And then the income portfolio was just more designed. You know, I've got a, a lot of members who over the years have said, well, you know, can we do ETFs or can we do something that's not as aggressive, that won't be as volatile? And so we also came up with an income portfolio as of May 19th. So the results here don't go back to November of last year. They just simply go back to May 19th, which is when we announced the stocks, the initial stocks for the aggressive and income portfolios. 
You can see since that time, we're up 9.28% through Friday of last week. The S&P was up 8%, so we're about 1% ahead. I can show you here that we were up about 6% on the S&P at the end of July, from May 19th to the end of July. And you can see the aggressive was up about 22% versus 6%. So this has come down a lot. This has gone up some, and we've kind of met in the middle. And again, capital appreciation, this aggressive uh, capital appreciation uh, fund or portfolio is really designed to capture strength from aggressive growth stocks. And as many of you probably know, growth stocks kind of took a backseat to value stocks in the last three months. But I'll show you a chart on that in a bit. Anyhow, today, the aggressive portfolio actually beat the S&P by a couple of percentage points. So that 1% now is back up to 3%. Uh, and the aggressive portfolio actually closed at the highest level it had been since back toward the end of September. So it is at least starting to pick up some strength. We'll see if that continues. I hope we get one more solid week out of it before we make our new selections. We shall see. Income portfolio, 9.95% versus 8.17% since May 19th. Actually, I think this is a I think this is pretty good performance. I think the model portfolio, even though we've had a rough three-month stretch, has been very impressive. Anytime you can outperform the S&P 500 by 25 percentage points in one year, I think that's pretty strong. I would also say this is pretty strong. Maybe not quite as strong, but it really just per depends on your perspective. These companies that go into the income portfolio are household names. They're going to be companies like McDonald's and Apple and Waste Management and Walmart and you know companies like that, Amazon, um, they're going to be companies that pay a dividend. So we got to have at least something coming in in terms of income as opposed to capital appreciation. And um, hopefully this portfolio doesn't show the same amount of volatility. And I think if you go back and look at these last two charts, you'll see the aggressive went shooting up, then came, you know, coming, you know, crashing back down here over the last couple of months. Model, model portfolio, maybe not as much, but there's definitely a lot more movement up and down in the model portfolio. And then again, you get into the income and there's not as much back and forth action. Um, really from this high at the end of July to this low beginning of August, that was probably the biggest drawdown that we've seen in that portfolio. And it was only about 4%. So that's not too bad considering. And when you look at the volatility in the S&P 500, and then you look at the volatility here, I think that the, the uh, uh, income portfolio has done extremely well. Also keep in mind, this return does not include dividends. So any dividends that are paid, and this portfolio has averaged, uh, the stocks in here have been averaging around 1.9 to 2% in terms of annual uh, yield. So every quarter would be roughly about a half percent. So you could probably, through two quarters, tack on 1% of that, and that would be pretty close. So we probably have a total return of close to 11% as of last Friday versus 8% on the S&P 500. That's pretty good, considering that this is designed to outperform during down markets. Um, if anything, I would think that it maybe would underperform during uh, up markets. But it's So that's the performance. Now, I want to show you the makeup of these um, portfolios. So if you're new to earnings beats, in the, I've got a chart list uh, for each one of these portfolios. And if you go into this feature, view all, summary, it will bring up the stocks that are in here. And you can see today, this is what I was referring to. Pretty nice day. Roku was up uh, 6%. CMG, finally, that was actually reversing candle today. So I've got some holding out some hope for CMG here in the short term. Um, but anyway, you add this up, clearly outperformed the S&P 500, which was down. Um, you can also, on the columns, you can check out sector, industry group, scooter. We'll just go ahead and go with that. Um, but many of these stocks began the quarter with scooters probably well up into the 90s. And you can see all the deterioration that took place in uh, several of these stocks this quarter. Um, Roku, still hanging on. Uh, Teradyne in the semiconductor, still hanging on. But if you go down and look at the bottom of this, this a lot of these industries completely fell apart. 
Um, inter internet, not quite so much. Software, a lot of software stocks got hit hard. Uh, restaurants have been awful. Defense was flying last probably eight weeks or so. We've seen a lot of profit taking in that group. Business support services has been lagging. Um, the ones that held up the best, computer hardware semiconductors, uh, have been some of our, our better performers. Now, if you want to go back and look over the last three months, which is similar to the, um, uh, it's not quite, I mean, this period has gone, uh, I guess it's one week less than three months. But if we look here at the last three months, you can see what has happened with the portfolio. Teradyne, a semiconductor, has done extremely well. CarMax has done really well for us. Um, Zimmer and Roku, Roku's been all over the place. It, done, it did great. It did horrible. It did great again. Came out with solid earnings, went down. Now it's bouncing back. This one's been all over the place. But really, you can see where the weaknesses come in on the model portfolio. Twitter, uh, we had that out as an active alert. Pulled it before earnings because we don't hold our active alerts into earnings. The portfolio stocks, we hold all of our stocks into or in through one earnings report because we hold through one quarter. So you've got to hold through one earnings report. Going in, I did not like that Twitter chart. Um, if you take a look at the relative strength, here's internet stocks. Here was Twitter relative to the internet stocks heading into its earnings report. I didn't like that. We were down at about a seven week low or in a seven week downtrend or relative and then we came out with the bad news. Huge gap down on big, uh, big volume. So that was not uh, good and certainly hurt our performance. AYX also has been hurt uh, throughout this entire period, just about. Um, we got in August 19th. This, believe it or not, AYX was up 10%, more than 10%, first two weeks. And then beginning of September, we saw the bottom kind of fall out on a lot of these stocks. But that's how you can go in and check. That's the model portfolio. Uh, this is being recorded, so you can come back and take a look at these later. Um, in the aggressive portfolio over the last three months. And by the way, this uh, Everquote, which is an internet stock, up 54%. Uh, this was a very difficult stock to hold throughout the period. As you can see, it went down from mid-September. We had a double top. It went down for about five straight weeks from $25 to 17. Hit this gap support level though, and then started turning back up. You can see the relative strength starting to build back up into the earnings and then exploded with earnings. Very, very strong report and continues to trend higher here, which has been nice. Uh, but prior to that, uh, you can see there hasn't been a whole lot of strength. Uh, APPS has been all over the place. These stocks, there's a lot of volatility. If you're someone that uh, really struggles with the volatility, this is probably not the best portfolio for you. I would suggest maybe looking into the income portfolio. Um, anytime you're in stocks, they can be volatile, but just the nature of the stocks in these various portfolios, you're likely to see much more volatility in the aggressive portfolio and the model, uh, much more so than you would in the income portfolio. Uh, but you can see throughout this quarter, APPS was up as high as almost $8 at the end of August. We got in on the 19th, and you can see on the 19th, the stock was 650. It was up probably 15% in two weeks. Everything was looking great, and then the bottom fell out. And again, I'll show you why in just a couple minutes. Uh, but that was the, and you can see down here, ENPH. By the way, ENPH came out. They beat top line, beat bottom line, raised guidance, and the stock went down from 25 to about uh, 18 and change on that earnings report. Um, personally, I still like ENPH. But it just didn't pan out. Look at where it topped back in August and came out crashing all the way back down throughout uh, the past two and a half, three months. If you look at a long-term weekly chart, though, it's a completely different picture. You got a long-term uptrend in play. We've seen this kind of a pullback here before. We saw this back in the summer of 2018, pulled back, then started turning back up the 50-week moving average. Here we come back down, getting close to the 50-week moving average. I wouldn't be surprised to see the stock turn back up. Again, solid results, top line beat, bottom line beat. But when the market rotates away from growth and into value, it really doesn't matter. And by the way, also look at what happened to renewable energy since 
the middle part of September. It's been straight down. So a bad group. Um, the group kind of fell apart. And again, it was uh, value stocks that took center stage over the growth stocks in the last three months. Um, one more portfolio. I'll just show you what was in here for the last three months, income portfolio. Uh, I think you're going to see that this is going to be a little bit different type of portfolio. Apple, KLA Corp, which is a, a fairly large uh, semiconductor stock. Um, this is OMF, which is uh, one main holdings. Uh, you can see we did have volatility. We did see the, the stock pull back a couple of times, but held in its support area and then uh, recently strengthened, went back up to new highs. So you got uh, one bank, you got uh, Walmart, Lockheed Martin, Coca-Cola, Waste Management, um, L3 Harris, Hershey's, and Starbucks. Um, didn't matter, Starbucks was in the restaurant group. Restaurants were not going to do well, no matter what, well, very few restaurants have done well over the last three months. Uh, but Starbucks uh, clearly took the group down as we saw things uh, rotate. Waste and disposal services back in, uh, back in August, one of the best areas of the market. Since then, not so much. Defense, same thing. Restaurants, clearly, uh, and I'll show you some charts later. Uh, that uh, I think will clearly demonstrate what uh, has happened over the past couple of months. All right, um, let's take a look at the sector performance. And I'm gonna do this over the last three months. And when you look at this, you can see over the last three months now, all of a sudden financials have taken the lead. Technology still doing well, industrials up there. So these three groups, what's been leading, Big drop off after you get out of those three sectors. Looking down toward the bottom, you got real estate, utilities, consumer stocks, um, took kind of a 90 day reprieve. I expect that they will bounce back at some point, but right now they are uh, certainly just uh, uh, pausing in their uptrends. Um, if you look at the industry groups, and this is where I think you can begin to see what happened in the portfolios the last three months. Here is your three month um, performance. And internet up 3%, that's not too, too bad. Going into consumer discretionary the last three months, everything is just flipped. Uh, when you go down and look at the bottom, if we had done the same thing three months ago, you probably would have seen restaurants first or top two or three. Specialized consumer services, uh, some of the retailers, a lot of these groups were up at the top. Now, you know, it's hard when you've got a restaurant in each of your three portfolios. We had Chipotle in the model, we had Shake Shack in the aggressive, and we had Starbucks in the income. When you got 10% uh, of your portfolio in a group like this, that completely loses favor in the market, uh, you're gonna struggle. Um, specialized consumer services down 8%. Uh, we've had stocks in that area also represented our portfolios. Going down the list, personal products, soft drinks, uh, talked about Coca-Cola. We had Coca-Cola in there, food products, Hershey's. You can see these groups not participating over the last three months. Renewable energy, uh, having ENPH, renewable energy is down 20% in the last three months. I don't care what kind of relative performer you have. When the group goes down 20%, it's going to be very difficult to outperform. Getting into the financials, all of a sudden everything turned around. Banks, which had been lagging, leading. Asset managers, nobody would touch them three months ago. Now they're leading. Reinsurance, same thing. Go down to the bottom. Here were your leaders three months ago. Property and casualty insurance, financial administration, specialty finance, insurance brokers. All of these not participating in this last three-month rally. Healthcare, medical equipment. We have medical equipment stocks. Worst performing area of healthcare. Then we get into the industrials. There's your waste and disposal services. Didn't give waste management much of a chance. Defense stocks, not performing well. We had uh, Lockheed Martin in uh, our, let's see, Lockheed Martin was in the income portfolio. We had uh, Northrop Grumman in the model portfolio. And you can see defense stocks not participating. It was just a completely different list here over these last three months. Technology, uh, software, here's software, 
and believe me, this is masked somewhat by Microsoft. There were a lot of software stocks that got hit really hard in the last quarter. But a couple of areas that certainly did well that we did participate in, computer hardware and semiconductors. Uh, having Apple and semiconductors in the portfolios helped for sure. All right, one other thing I wanted to point out here is that when you look at the portfolios, and I'm gonna go back over here and let's talk about the income portfolio. Um, Actually, let's go back and look at the aggressive portfolio. And, or even maybe, well, let's just start with the model. Okay, so here's the model portfolio. I don't know, this is a user-defined index, by the way. I couldn't send this chart to anybody because you don't have the data in your account. You have to have the data in your account in order to be able to, to show these charts. So, for instance, over here, I keep an Excel spreadsheet every day. And over here under user defined indexes, I go in and put values in every day. That's how I create the chart. So I can't send you a chart because your account's not gonna recognize the data that goes into it. So that uh, just wanted to make sure you understood. Um, so let's go back over here again. Let me pull up these charts. And I'm gonna start with the model portfolio. And then over here, what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you the IWF versus the IWD. And let's get this set up. All right, now when you're looking at this, I want you to see that the, all this is is a ratio. The Russell 1000 growth ETF divided by the Russell 1000 value ETF. And notice that for the most part, we had this beautiful move up. November 19th is when we started the model portfolio. And you can see that for the most part, we had a little bit of a hiccup in May, um, but from November 19th to August 27th, 28th, whatever, um, this ratio was going up, meaning that growth stocks were in favor. I can tell you that our portfolios have been made up mostly of growth stocks. I've been very bullish. If I'm bullish, I'm gonna stick mostly with growth. Um, now, there have been changes, thematic changes in the market. One being that economically sensitive stocks are doing well. All of a sudden, everyone wants to get out of the bond market and we've seen yields rising. Why do you get out of the bond market? Because you believe the economy is strengthening. If the economy strengthens, interest rates will go up. If interest rates go up, your bond va values go down. So you want to get out of bonds if you believe the economy is going to strengthen. You want to get into stocks. That's, that's the good news. So money's rotating. It's certainly sending the S&P 500 all-time highs. But as it rotates and as the economy is anticipated to strengthen, you are going to get periods of strength from economically sensitive stocks like banks, like transports. Those are areas, you know, many of the industrials, uh, besides even the transports, uh, those are the areas that are gonna be in favor and that's what we've been seeing. So starting in about August, you can see that this ratio has been going down. Now just look at this chart, how it you know, started, starting on November 19th. Actually, let's go back here and I am going to do, let's go back to uh, November 19th. Okay, so here's where we started and this is how we've done. Now, if you go back over to the model portfolio, I want you to just kind of look at this in your head and then look at the model portfolio. Went back, went down in December for a little bit, but other than that, I mean, it's pretty much up. We went up a little bit past October, or excuse me, August, but then since then we've been coming down, right in here, down, back up, then down again. Down, back up, then back down again. That's been the problem, is that the rotation has been taking money away from aggressive stocks and into value stocks. So I can sit here and say, well, you know, they were bad picks, which some of them were. Some of the companies completely turned around and went down, uh, notwithstanding their group. Twitter was one of them. Uh, career education, CECO was one of them, just completely fell apart. Um, they were leaders, but they just fell apart. 
And that's been okay in the past. In the past, we've had each quarter, we've had a couple of those stocks that haven't performed well, but the others have. The difference this quarter is that growth has not been in favor. If you look back into May, when growth fell out of favor for about five weeks, and you go back here, the portfolio got hit in those five weeks. I mean, it, you know, this isn't rocket science. If you're in growth stocks and growth stocks are in favor, in favor and you have a lot of the leading growth stocks, you're probably going to outperform. But if you get into a period where that group, that type of stock is underperforming, it's going to make it much more difficult. And I think that's what we've run into. So one of the big questions is going to be what's going to happen over the next three months. Is this IWF, IWD going to take back off to the upside? And if so, we want to be in growth stocks. If it doesn't, we're going to want to be in value stocks. Well, I think we're going to probably have to hedge our bets a little bit. I think uh, I don't want to be in all growth stocks. That's for sure. I think it probably makes sense to do some banks and some transports um, and some of the other industrials. Uh, you know, you got the um, commercial vehicles and trucks, um, industrial machinery, those types of areas. Um, probably going to want some representation because if this continues going down, those types of stocks I just mentioned, those, those industry groups are likely to continue to outperform. All right, um, let's see, what else did I wanna do about performance here? Um, well, I mentioned the consumer stocks at weekend. And again, if we went back through the list, I think you would see uh, in each of the portfolios, we have a number of consumer names. So, you know, you get stocks like Starbucks, um, you know, and Chipotle and Shake Shack, those three restaurants, they look great in August, but that particular area of the market's completely fallen out of favor. Restaurants have been, if not the worst group, one of the worst groups in the market for the last 90 days. So it's going to be difficult to outperform the market when you've got representation in each portfolio in a group that has not performed well. All right, um, let's move on. I want to go through now and talk a little bit about the overall market. Um, those of you who are members of Earnings Beats and get the daily market report every day, uh, you know pretty much uh, that I've been bullish. I continue to be very bullish. And uh, I think that that is, um, I think going forward, that's going to be really important uh, because I think the market goes higher. Now, as far as some of the individual charts I wanted to talk about, I, I bring this up a lot. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it, but I do believe we are in a secular bull market. A secular bull market is a very, very long-term bull market. We saw it in the 80s and 90s. We saw it in the 50s and 60s. The 2000s, everybody wants to think back to those bear markets. They keep waiting for that bear market to come. 2007 to 2009. These are generational type bear markets, secular bear markets. We just had it. We're not going to have another one, in my opinion. Um, I would not be holding out waiting for, the, the, for doomsday. I think you're going to miss a big run in the market personally. Um, so that I'm not even considering. And you know, when I start hearing people talk about this is going to be worse than 2009, give me a break. I, yeah, whatever. Um, I will say this. We're going to see breakdowns technically long before we ever get down to the 2009 low. We will see a ton of breakdowns, and there will be a lot of different times where we can reevaluate what's going on in the market. I would not be seeing an all-time high worrying about this happening. Makes no sense. Um, I think you can see we've gone through some periods. Last December, uh, fourth quarter of 2018 was very difficult. Um, I think probably the worst period was actually at the beginning of 2016. Right here, this is what kind of, when we went down below these other two lows, I was like, oh, this isn't good. And then we came right back up and I was, you know, a little kick save. And then we were fine. But I was actually starting to turn a little bit bearish at the beginning of 2016. I stayed bullish throughout 2018. Um, yeah, it was painful. We got hit hard, but I just, I, I didn't see the signals in that drop that told me that the market was going to fall apart going forward. Number one was jobs. We don't have recessions. We don't have big bear markets without job growth going negative. Never went negative. So there are things that we can follow, things other than just what the S&P 500 is doing that we can gain some confidence from. But anyway, we are in a secular bull market, in my opinion. 
This is the growth chart and employment that I was talking about. We're still positive. We've been positive since we turned positive back in 2010. So don't worry about what everyone says on CNBC. Follow this chart. Jobs 12-month rate of change. Dollar, dollar, employ. Do in, or put in there the rate of change. Uh, if you come down um, here, uh, I put in under the price indicator, dollar, dollar, employ. Make the style invisible so you don't get all the data. Instead, you get the overlay, which is just the 12-month rate of change. That's what this is. And you can see this is not uh, looking that badly at this point. Next up, um, we'll talk a little bit about the sectors. Let's go into transports. Uh, transports, this is one of the things I was watching. I pointed this out months ago. I said, when the transports start moving, you've got to pay attention. If you look back when the S&P 500 has struggled, which we did in 2011 and 2012, which we did in 2015 and 2016, and which we did at the end of 2018 throughout 2019, when the S&P struggles, it's generally because we're getting no support from transports. Think about the Dow theory. That's really what this is all about. If we're going higher, if, if, the, if the Dow's breaking out, the S&P 500 is breaking out, and it's a sustainable rally to the upside, transport should do well. Why? Because a sustainable rally requires a strengthening economy or at least a strong economy. You can't have a great bull market with rising S&P 500 profits with a dropping transport group. You can't, transportation, that's, those are the stocks that ship goods. How are you going to have a strength in the economy if transports are not anticipated to ship more goods? But when you start seeing the transports breaking out, that is when the S&P 500 does its thing. And what we are seeing right now, in my opinion, is a breakout in transports. Early breakout. I think we are in, and I'm, I mean, I'm talking about being like at this part of the, the stage on the S&P 500. A lot more upside here. This was 30% after we got this breakout. Back here, when we broke out, the S&P was probably what, uh, a little over 14, let's just call it 1,500, and it went to 2,100. That was 40% right here. This was 30%. So when people, you know, when I write and I say, hey, the S&P 500 could hit 4,000 next year, that's simply doing what we've done in the past when transports have broken out. So again, I think we wanna be bullish. Um, then the 10 year treasury yield, this is another thing that's always worth watching. We just broke above 190 short term resistance. So we are now at about a three month uh, high on the 10 year treasury yield and rising. When we rise, that's what these blue highlighted areas are. When we rise in the treasury yield, we rise in the S&P 500. Money rotates from defensive treasuries. You sell treasuries, yield goes up. Always an inverse relationship there, 100% inverse relationship at all times. Treasury prices and treasury yields always move opposite one another. So if the yield's going up, the treasury prices are going down, telling you that people are selling treasuries. When the yield goes up, that money from treasuries comes out of the bond market and makes its way over to the stock market. That's why the yield and the S&P 500 tend to go up hand in hand. So we got a lot of things lining up. I'm very bullish as we uh, round out 2019 and head into 2020. Um, and actually a member sent in a chart to me. I think it came in today and I wanted to just share this with you um, because this is another um, indication. I, haven't, I don't talk about it as much. It's not uh, one of my go-tos. Well, it's one of my go-tos, but it's not uh, my top two or three. But if you look at banks versus real estate, Notice that we just had a breakout of this downtrend. Um, when the banks start rolling versus real estate, that's a really good sign. If you go back and you look at 2013, which is a very strong year for the stock market, banks were rallying relative to the REITs. Remember at the end of 2016 and throughout 2017, we had the huge bull market move. Banks were rallying relative to REITs. When we have struggled, you can see what happens. We downtrend. Anytime this, this ratio downtrends, it's not good for the stock market. Now, you might ask yourself why. Why is this significant? 
Well, banks, you know, before they broke out real estate, it used to be in the, in the financial sector. And so banks were kind of the bullish part, in my opinion, of the financial sector, whereas REITs and all the, the real estate uh, group was more of the defensive side of financials. And so when, the, when banks are outperforming REITs, it's good on two fronts. Number one, because you've got, when you've got an expanding economy, banks tend to grow. Their profits grow. Expanding economy means higher interest rates, yield spreads move up, bank net interest margins go up, their profits go up, and then their stock price goes up as a result. REITs tend to be avoided during strengthening periods. It's a little bit more of a defensive group. They can do okay in a good, solid bull market, strengthen the economy, but they don't do as well on a relative basis. So when you look at this down channel that we had been in for quite some time, I think you can see that we have clearly now broken that down channel and moving into an up channel. This is another sign of a big rally ahead in stocks. All right, I wanna talk a little bit about industry groups and then we'll get into some individual stocks and then we'll wrap this thing up. If for any reason you all need to leave, um, you know, that's, uh, that's fine. We, we are recording this. You can get a copy of the recording and it, it's free to everyone. So uh, have no fear. Um, John, I don't know if you're hanging around there, if you want to mention anybody who's come in late, the special that we run. Um, but this might be a good time for me to take a break before I get into the industry groups and the individual stocks. Do you want to take okay, over yeah. for a minute? Yeah, that sounds good. By the way, um, super job. I'm uh, amazed how much I learn every time. I are hope you everybody's. Are you, are you bullish? Oh, I'm bullish. I'm, you know, ridiculous. You're, <laughs> you're bullish. <laughs> I'm bullish. I'm bullish on bully. Yeah, let me just throw this up because I know some people came in late. And I just want to <laughs> mention one other thing about it as well. Um, so let me just share. Hey, Tom, you want to stop? Oh, I'm, never mind. I think I'm okay. I'm good. Okay. Um, this is where I mentioned this early in the session, and this is particularly um, good for those of you who are either currently monthly subscribers at Earnings Beats, or maybe you're new to Earnings Beats or you're thinking you're on the fence. This is something we offer each webinar. I'm offering it to you tonight. And by the way, where it says sign up by midnight tonight, I'll actually leave this open um, for the next day or so because a lot of people weren't able to come to the live event and I want them to have an opportunity. So we'll leave it open till Wednesday. Um, but if you think you're gonna be with us for a while, you like what you see, this includes, by the way, the next weeks, if you're not a member already, it also it includes the access to the top 10 pick webinar that Tom's previewing tonight. And the next four, or three after that for a whole year, plus all the other events and webinars uh, that we have. So this is a good time if you're interested, you know, to sign up for the um, annual deal and um, you'll save a lot of money in the process. And I, also do want to mention the relative strength industry group chart list, 104 industries. When you take that and you combine it with our stronger industry chart list, it's just a powerful way uh, to put them together and to come up with a high reward to risk trading candidates. You can find this link on the website, earningsbeats.com. You'll see the uh, webinar special. Tom, that's what I've got right now. I don't know if there's anything else you want to announce. Or you want to keep going here? Um, well, we can make our one big announcement if you'd like. This is a pretty exciting announcement coming up. You want to do it or you want me to do it? Well, let me go ahead and share something. Okay? Sure. This is what you're talking about. Yep. This, is <laughs> this, is ex this is really exciting to us, folks. This is our first, um, you know, we do a lot of webinars, but this is, a, this is a biggie for us. The Market Vision 2020. I know it seems a long way away, January 4th, but it's not. You have to prepare for these kinds of events. Um, it's our first online financial conference. We have a list of 
industry experts coming together to tell you what they're seeing as a new year begins. And what we want you to do is, you know, fill this out, get on the, on the mailing list. Again, you can go right to the website, Market Vision 2020, fill it out. And then what this will do is this will allow you to get on the email list and we'll keep you up to date on everything that's happening between now and then, because a lot's going to happen. We're going to announce the topics. We're going to announce the speakers. There could be some uh, special uh, presentations that take place between you know, now and the actual event. Uh, there's going to be some early bird special pricing. So get on this list. I think you're going to you know, come along for the ride with us. There's going to be a lot of stuff that will be covered over the next you know, six, seven weeks. And like I said, it's a ways away. But we're very excited about this one, Tom. Yeah, I, uh, I'm really excited. I can't, I can't let the cat out of the bag just yet, but we are talking to a number of speakers who are basically lined up, but I want to make sure we, everything's confirmed and good to go before we uh, announce. But this is going to be a who's who of technical analysts that are going to be joining us. It's going to be an all-day presentation, so you're not just going to hear my thoughts on the market, but you're going to hear a number of different experts uh, what they think about this breakout to all-time highs. You know, do they believe in it? Do they not believe in it? Areas of the market that they like going forward. I mean, this is going to be a day that you are not going to want to miss. Uh, it's probably the most exciting thing that I have seen for, uh, for quite some time. So uh, definitely check that out on our webpage. Go in there to that market vision link that John's pointing to. It'll bring you right into this page and just sign up. There's no cost. Now, at this point, no cost. All this is going to do is get you in the loop uh, for all of the information that's going to be shared as we start to make announcements. And there will be plenty of announcements coming up. I will tell you, one, uh, one thing that we are talking about with the speakers is that we are going to have some uh, drawings during the event uh, on January 4th. And these are going to be some pretty valuable drawings. Uh, and the price is not going to be very steep. We're trying to make it very affordable for everybody. So make sure you sign in. There will also be a discount for anybody who has provided their email and is signed up to this newsletter. So there, believe me, you're not going to want to not be involved in here. So make sure you go in and you sign up for that Market Vision 2020. Uh, really, really excited about that. And we'll talk about that more um, probably as the week unfolds, uh, getting pretty close to making some big announcements. All right, I'm ready to move on. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, the screen and let's do this. Um, I'm going to go into first uh, taking a look at the sectors before we get into industry groups, just quickly showing you what sectors are performing well versus the S&P 500. I think you already know from earlier when I was talking about, um, you know, the financials and industrials and technology. But when you look at this chart, this is a weekly relative chart of each of the sector ETFs versus the S&P 500. So here, this is technology relative to the S&P 500. Down here, you can see the actual, um, the absolute chart. So it's made the breakout and then all that. But on a relative basis, this is really important. Because sometimes, I mean, I've seen gold moving higher in the near term. But if you look at a long-term relative chart, gold's been downtrending for eight years. It's more than just what you see on the absolute chart. You've got to look at relative strength. Technology continues to be a leader. Consumer discretionary had been leading throughout 2018 and 2019. Now, all of a sudden, it has started to turn down. And for the first time in two years, you can see that the, the weekly relative PPO has gone negative. That's why this gives us a little bit of cause for concern when we go into selecting our stocks next, next week for the next quarter. If consumer discretionary isn't going to be a leading sector, finding stocks within consumer discretionary um, might not be what we want to do. Uh, we may not want to load up, that's for sure. And you can see we topped back at the beginning of September and it's been straight down. So that's one of the reasons why some of our consumer discretionary names, those consumer names that we've had in our portfolios did not perform well. Communication services, just kind of going along for the ride, sideways, not very exciting. This I'm excited about, industrials, because I didn't annotate the others, but if you, you can see this, 
when we have gone through periods of sideways consolidation in the S&P 500, we have seen periods of relative weakness in industrials. We saw it in 2011, 2012, 2014 through 2016, and then we make the break and we take off. We have been in a relative uptrend throughout this bull market, but you go through periods where industrials lead, industrials lag, industrials lead, industrials lag, industrials lead, industrials lag, and I believe we are just breaking out. I think industrials are a must own for the next quarter. We will have plenty of representation by industrials. Financials, I think same thing. You lead, then you go through periods consolidation, even pull back, you lead, you pull back, and now we're leading again. Treasury yields on the rise, uh, the yield spread is on the rise, and the Fed is pretty much guaranteeing us it's going to continue because they've announced that they're gonna buy $60 billion worth of short-term treasuries over or each month for the next four or five months. So that's going to help create lower short-term yields and at the same time, a wider spread. That benefits banks. There's a reason why we're seeing this breakout. We wanna be more interested in looking for key banks, uh, maybe asset managers, investment services, those type asset, man or I said asset managers, investment services. And there was one other group that I was thinking about, um, not uh, thinking about it right now, I'll come up with it in a minute. But anyway, as financials outperform, we wanna make sure that we have representation. Then we go through some of these other areas, healthcare, not so much. Had a little bit of a pop last six weeks or so, seven weeks, but overall, mostly downtrending. Consumer staples, again, another consumer area that was flying high up until the middle of August when we announced our last group of stocks. Then it's been straight down since, not good. Next up, real estate. Real estate has completely fallen apart in a bull market. Uh, break out the 52-week high or you know all-time highs. I'm not interested in real estate. I'm not interested in utilities. Uh, while we were consolidating, utilities and real estate were fine. Now that we've broken out, I think they will continue to lag. Energy, look at the relative strength. Okay, so here we've been moving up these last, you can see the, the higher lows on the absolute chart, lower lows on the relative chart. We're bouncing, but the S&P 500 is flying. Energy still not leading. Don't want to take a shot here. Materials, kind of the same deal. Materials, you can see breaking to a new, uh, what is that, probably 19, 20 month high on an absolute basis. On a relative basis, though, really going nowhere. So if you're trying to outperform the S&P 500, I don't know that you really want to do it with materials at this point. All right, industry groups. Um, let's start off. And as John was mentioning, this is one of the things we send out. If you're a annual member of Earnings Beats and you're also at least an extra member at Stock Charts, I, we can send you this list. Literally, it's as simple as going in here to edit list, send a friend. If we have your user ID at Stock Charts, we type it in. Okay, boom, you got it. And you download it exactly as we have it here. Um, now, when you go through here, what's the significance? Well, this is every industry group. I just showed you sectors. Now you can look at it from an industry group level. Computer services, am I interested? We just broke to a new 52 week relative, actually a three year relative low in this group. No, I don't wanna be interested in a group like that. I mean, if there's one stock in there that's just blowing the, the uh, cover off the ball, then yeah, maybe we might wanna include it. Um, but for the most part, that's gonna be a group I mean, literally, you're going to have to have a really significant winner uh, coming out of there before I'd be interested. Semiconductors, on the other hand, look at the relative strength over the last six months. Straight up. Look at the relative PPO. Straight up. Yes, this is an area of the market that we want representation in. Does that mean, I mean, we were going straight up before on a relative basis and we came back down. Does it guarantee us anything? No. But when you're rallying and you're showing relative strength, if you're in stocks during this period when you're rising or even way back here, you're probably going to do very well. Um, software. Software has been weak really since back in July on a relative basis. And if it wasn't for Microsoft, you would see this a lot worse. Again, Microsoft masks a lot of weakness that we've seen in software. 
but the overall uptrend, you know, I'm not going to question it. I still think that there is a very real possibility that software does well in the next quarter. Electronic equipment all of a sudden has caught fire and look at that uh, relative PPO. That's nice. But this group has a history of looking really strong and then weak, really strong, weak, really strong, weak, and now really strong again. I don't know. This one, may, again, you'd probably, I'd have to see a, an individual stock that just looks real good to be interested in putting it in the portfolios. Uh, computer hardware, if there's a better group out there right now than this, I don't know what it is. I have been talking about computer hardware since back in August. And the reason was that even though August was a down month, they, they were talking about the trade war, Apple, which had been getting killed during periods when the trade war discussions were going on and everybody was fearful. I mean, look at what the computer hardware group did back in October through December on a relative basis. Look at what it did in May. Remember when we had a lot of the trade war fears kicked in, the market did poorly in May, late April, early May? Apple and the computer hardware group were getting hit. But look in August, the next time we started having scares about the trade war, kept going higher. That was one of the clues for me that the market was not going back down. Uh, Apple, there was no reason for Apple to trade like that. And you can see computer hardware has continued to perform exceptionally well. It is getting very extended. So that would be the only worrisome part is that it's moved a lot. Apple's moved up a lot. Uh, so we'll have to give that some consideration. Um, electrical components. Now I'm not going through all of these industry groups that would take us forever and I really wanna get into some individual stocks. But uh, electrical components and equipment, been downtrending, not interested there. And then the last one in the technology area is telecommunications. Uh, back earlier in April, it was looking really strong, but look where we are now. Uh, totally out of favor. This group is not in favor right now. And again, unless I see one stock that is just off the charts good, um, I would be a little careful with the telecommunications equipment group. Um, industrials. I do want to go through the industrial group a little bit because this is the group that's picking up. Um, I talked about waste and disposal services. Look at how we were doing heading into August and look at what has happened since. This was a situation where we got way ahead of ourselves and that's why I, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about computer hardware and Apple is just because we've run so much, do we have another three months of relative strength before we see a, a relative pullback? Um, truckers, truckers I actually like. I know we've pulled back recently, but I think that's an opportunity. It's a big part of the um, transportation area and you can see on an absolute basis, we've got a really nice uptrend. The problem is we haven't broken out to a new high here in the last few weeks. And with the S&P going to new highs, that's why you're seeing this relative weakness. But I think this is a strong group and I like the transports. So I believe we're gonna see the truckers move back higher. And the fact we're getting a pullback could create an opportunity here in this space. Uh, let me just pull up a couple more of these. Defense stocks. Defense, this was awesome back in mid-August. Like I said, Northrop Grumman and Lockheed Martin both went into our portfolios. And then that happened. And as a result, those two stocks underperformed. Um, one more good one. Let's take a look at, um, let's look at the commercial vehicles and trucks. Um, this is a group that bottomed in August. Remember earlier I said everything's just been flipped on its head. Defense was leading. Commercial vehicles setting new 52 week, actually a year and a half, three year lows, um, relative lows. And now three months later, this group is flying and defense stocks are coming down. It's like the market has turned a switch. And honestly, the switch I think has been turned is that I think the market was legitimately fearful of the trade deal between the US and China. I don't think they're fearful anymore. I think, I mean, even today, they were talking at the beginning of the day in pre-market about trade, you know, trade worries. And you saw the Dow down 100 and some points in futures. Bam, by the end of the day, positive. Um, the market, I don't think, is worried about the trade war right now. And so all the talking heads are going to talk about it. But I'm just saying, if the market was worried about the trade deal, they would not be bidding up commercial vehicles and trucks. 
they would not be bidding up Apple. Those are, these are areas that would really be getting hit hard. All right, um, let's go ahead and end that there. We can always talk about this a little bit more uh, next Tuesday when we actually have the top 10 stocks uh, webinar. Let's go ahead and move into individual stocks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have updated the, uh, or I have updated most of the strong earnings chart list. So what was 157 charts right now, and I've got to finish doing some labeling and all, uh, but if you hit the uh, edit list, it'll tell you how many charts. You can see right now I'm over 300. This will all be coming to you all. Uh, anyone who is an Earnings Beats member, you don't have to be an annual member. You just have to be at least a trial member. If, you're an, if you are a stock charts extra or above, you have to be extra or above for us to be able to get a chart list to you. And if you're not a stock charts member, uh, obviously we can't send you a chart list because this is on the stock charts platform. So you've got to be at least a member there. But you can take out a 30-day trial for free at stock charts. So I would suggest that you do that if you're not already a member. That's free. Just make sure you're at least, you have at least the extra level. And then if you try us for $7 for 30 days, we will send you our strong earnings chart list. Trust me, getting this chart list is going to be worth $7 by itself for sure. Um, I just spent the entire weekend putting this together. We, I had to go through the heart of earnings season. It takes a long time to go through looking at these individual companies that beat top and bottom lines and then look at their individual charts to see if we want to include them. So definitely do that. And again, just like I showed you earlier, if you're a stock charts extra member or above and you give us our use, your user ID and you're a member of ours, we will send this to you and you'll have this chart list. Very powerful. All right. So one thing you can do with this chart list once you get it is put it in summary. View the list in summary form. Now, how does that help you? Well, let's say that one day biotechs break out and you're thinking, okay, well, wonder which biotech companies have beaten top and bottom line and look good technically. Well, that's, what we've, that's why we're here. Type in biotechnology and in this chart list, it will tell you all of the biotech stocks that I have looked at that have beaten top and bottom line estimates and that I think look good on the chart for one reason or another. You can rank them by scooter if you'd like. So you can see which ones have been the best performers, at least based on the scooter score. And then the other thing, columns here with, uh, you can do the market cap. So you can sort it by market cap and just say, okay, here are your large, here are the large caps by scooter rank. Here's the mid cap by scooter rank and then here's small cap. So if you want to really go out on a limb, you might look at CLVS and say, wow, it's down eight and a half percent today. I wonder what that chart looks like. Well, it just had a huge move and you can see the downtrend that it had been in, but look at the volume that came in on this push to the upside from about four and a quarter up to $6, over 35 million shares with earnings. Now it's pulling back today, probably could pull back a little bit more, but those are, um, that's kind of what we do. We put this list together for you. Um, normally the annotations are brief. I don't go through a whole lot. Um, but if I see volume that's just off the charts, I usually will highlight it with a blue arrow. And a lot of times these charts will either have one or two support lines. Um, and I just try to identify what I believe are the key support levels on these charts. So you might not see this stock hit this support level this week or next week, but maybe two months from now, it may come down and hit the support level, put in a reversing candle, and it could be a trade candidate. All right. So that's just, that's one way you can use it. Um, and again, you can do that for any of these. Let's say, okay, semiconductors. We've had so many great reports out of the semiconductors. But there you can see, sorted by large cap, mid cap, small cap, then sorted by scooter. Look at all these scooters, all 85 or above. Um, and I'll show you a couple of these in, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's how easy it is. Or if you just say industrials, because, you know, if you want to say, well, what stocks are, are on here in the industrial sector? Well, here's the, if I type in industrial, anything that shows industrial will come up here, by the way. 
So here's real estate, a sector, but it's industrial and office REITs comes up in the industry. So by typing in industrial, you won't get all the, sec all the industrial sector stocks, but you'll get some. Here's a couple more real estates that you can see stocks are part of the REITs. But for the most part, you've got industrials here. Um, you could then sort it by industry. So if you want to know, okay, aerospace, here are the three aerospace uh, building materials, business support and services. So you see how you can pair this up with that industry group, relative strength chart list. If you like what's going on on one of those charts, you can come in here and just quickly identify which individual stocks have beat top and bottom line and then pull up the chart and look at right to see where the key support areas are. This stock was up to 340. It's coming down testing its first key support level. This is where it started trading up with earnings, right at about 280. Went up to 310, eventually got up as high as 340, and now it's back down to this 280 area. Uh, the other one that was um, in here, um, let's see. What did I just do with that? Oh, there we go. Okay, so the other one though was PCAR, P-C-A-R, P-A-C-C-A-R, PACAR. Um, this is one that really looks good to me. Look at the volume coming on that breakout. It came back down, tested the breakout area, earnings, right where it broke out from earnings, and then took back off again. But maybe a 20-day test, maybe it comes all the way back down to the 74 area. But this is one that you want to pay attention to. Here's your com commercial vehicles and trucks breaking out. Here's that relative strength. And here is PACAR relative to the S&P and relative to its peers. So you get it all right here, just very quickly. Try to give you as much information as we can. All right, another thing that you can do in addition to viewing a uh, summary is, and this is how I'll pick stocks for next week, by the way, is I go into this candle glance and I just quickly start looking for uh, companies. Now, these are companies, the ones at the beginning of the chart list, are, they're all in number or in sequential order. So let me go back over here and let's look at the summary. Um, actually, let's look at 10 per page. So these are the first ones. The first number is 4369. The next one's 4370. Next one, 4371, and so on. The ones that are numbered earliest are the ones that reported the longest ago. It's just this constant charts, you know, companies coming into the strong earnings chart list and then going right back out. As we get closer to their earnings report, their earnings were in mid-September, so they probably are not going to report again until mid-December. As we get close to mid-December, maybe by the end of this month, when we send out an updated chart list, this one will be gone. Because as you can see, this is when the earnings came out. See that? This is when the earnings came out on these different stocks. And by the way, here, notice that was not a positive reaction. But we had an uptrend, and we had an established trading range, high to low. So even though we had a negative reaction, I still liked the support area here. And notice what happened. After earnings, it came right down, hit this support area, and then turned right back up again, trying to break out. So a lot of times, companies have great reports, and then they still go lower after those reports and end up going down to a key support level before re rebounding. All of this, if, if a market maker has an institutional client that wants to buy, this is how they gather shares. Anybody buying at 1175, two weeks later, the stock is at 1050, they think it's the worst stock in the world and they just sell. People that don't look at support levels, people that don't follow technical analysis, they just sell. They get caught up in the emotion, they sell. And you can see the volume was pretty strong in here, but we didn't lose support and ended up turning right back up again. And that is frustrating when you don't follow stocks technically because you buy here, you sell here, and then a month later, we're right back up to where it was before. And then you're scratching your head saying that Wall Street is fixed and it's a game and you can't win. Well, you can win if you try to get on the side of the market maker. But anyway, I wanted to point that out and show you that these earnings, the ones the furthest back, uh, you're gonna see the earnings out probably a month and a half to two months ago. So now let's go back to the candle glance. This, I've got 300 charts, 307 charts, and each one of these candle glance has 30 charts on it. 
So it'll go across 10 here, which is 10 times 30 is 300. And then the 11th one should have seven charts on it. And there they are, that's the 307. All right, so if I start at the beginning, what I'm looking for now, I know that the earnings are gonna be way out over here. I'm looking at the two things primarily. Number one, I'm looking at the big volume, um, the ones that had the really massive volume when earnings come out. Um, and what I really like are the ones that have big earnings and then have these huge hollow candles. This stock prior to earnings was 16 and a half. Two days later on big volume, the stock hit 19 and a half. Now some might say, well, it's gone up too much. Well, maybe. And in this case, we did pull back right to the top of gap support, which is all, that's, if you know anything about my gap trading strategy, that is perfect, right to the top of the gap. Didn't go down to the bottom, never got to the bottom, didn't fill. Came down and each time it hit this top of gap support, it bounced. Nice hammer there, nice hollow candle there off a downtrend. Um, they are reversing type candles. But when you look at uh, SCS, you can see here, this was a breakout level. We actually came down a little bit below, but one thing you could do is once you see a new low go in, I don't go back and adjust old charts, but when I see this and I see it come all the way back down, I would then come in and probably put that right there at this opening and see that that held. And 17 and a quarter back to 18.50 in two weeks, came back down, look at that hammer. Uh, one thing I really like is when a stock goes down, puts in a new low intraday, and then comes back up and holds it into the close. That is usually a pretty good sign. Why? Because to me, that almost guarantees you that market makers were buying. What technical analyst or what technical buyer is going to buy a stock when it is breaking down here below these prior lows? You know, you're going to have a big red candle. That is not going to look good. It's below the 50 day. Who would be buying there? I wouldn't. Not, I mean, that's a, that's a breakdown until it reverses. You don't know if it's going to reverse or not, but a lot of times that's a breakdown. This, instead of a reversal, what if it had been this? You know, you get in here thinking, oh, it's hitting the 50 day. Um, you know, this, that's as far as it's going to go. And then next thing you know, it's down 15 cents below the 50 day. How do you know? that it's not gonna be this kind of move below the 50 day, and it's just gonna be this, you don't know. So technical traders are not gonna buy into that kind of weakness. Market makers know that stops will be triggered when you take out that prior low. Believe me, they've got their, all their algorithms, they know how to accumulate shares. And a breakdown, an intraday breakdown will do it. So when a stock comes back up like this, a lot of times, Market makers are buying, and a lot of times they will continue to buy. All right. Um, let's go back. Maybe just a couple more of these. I'm going to save some of this for next week, but I did want to just show you some of these charts that have reported recently. So let's go in. I'll just go here to the ninth slide here of Candle Glance. Uh, DVA, here's a good one. Sideways consolidating. Now I've marked, I've marked these already, but here's the top of gap. And I, if we break out again, and a lot of times in the past, I don't, um, I don't send out strong earnings chart list until after a stock has traded for about a week after earnings. Um, but I wanted to get these out. So I've made some exceptions and I've taken it right up through last Friday's earnings reports. But if this stock were to break out, I would change my support levels. If I, was, if I was completing this next week, and let's say DVA had gone up to $72, $73 and broken out, then I would probably move this and say, we're not going back down here. I'm going to go down top of gap support and the bottom of that day's trading. Why there? Well, think about it. There were 6 million shares traded that day. That was the low of the day. That is where buyers came in. So if that's where buyers came in with 6 million shares traded, I want to know that level down the road. So that's why those two areas would be my key levels. Now, because we haven't broken out yet, we could come back down and we might actually fail to hold the top of gap support. And we might end up coming back down to the 62 and a half level. 
So that's why both of those were in there. But again, if we broke out, if I had, if I was updating these charts, I would move that right to there. But for now, let's just leave it there. All right, um, we can do a couple more here. Let's see if I can find, I told you I'd mention, uh, we'll go over a couple of these semiconductors. Um, let's see if I can find a good one. Um, this is a good stock. I like this, a biotech. Talked about this one quite a bit. But REGN, uh, if you listen to my show every day from 9 to 9.30, I do a three you must see at the end of the day. And this was one that I did at the end of last week. Um, on this gap up, I thought this, look at the earnings, or excuse me, the uh, volume on earnings. Biggest of the year, biggest over the last year. And it gapped up. Now, it did bounce, it did come back off the high, but in my opinion, it has completely changed this downtrend. And now we're in an uptrend. Look at this holding. These pullbacks are holding the 20-day. Notice when we rallied here, we didn't hold the 20-day when we pulled back. Kept going lower and lower. Now we're holding the 20, setting new highs. Volumes picking up. To me, this is a change in character on the chart. Look at the PPO, which was always negative on the downtrend. Now look at it. You see the difference? These charts, and now it's telling me I want to buy on a pullback. Back here, I didn't want to do that, but I want to buy now on a pullback. I actually, I own it, so I, I'm not going to buy. But if it pulled back back into the 325, 330 area, probably would be a pretty solid buy. All right, uh, but I wanted to find a semiconductor, and then we'll wrap this thing up. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of them in here, so I should be able to find one pretty quickly. Let me figures. Let's see. Oh, um, by the way, AYX, this is in the model portfolio. They reported, they, re they had good numbers. I'm leaving, I'm putting them back on. I took them off of the strong earnings chart list because um, earnings were coming up. But even though they reported earnings and remain in a downtrend, they were solid earnings and I could see a reversal. I wouldn't be shocked to see AYX turn back up and move right back through this 101 area and test that 50 day. And if it gets through the 50 day, this could eventually be a long-term cup. Let me show you a weekly chart here. Off, this looks different, doesn't it, on a weekly chart than on a daily chart? Now, because it's been in our model portfolio for the last three months, it's absolutely killing us. But I could see a move up and this being a cup, kind of like we moved up here. See how we came down here? This only went to the 20 week. But see how we turned back up? Kind of did like a little bit of a cup, pull back, little handle, and then break out. I could see that unfolding again on AYX. I would not give up on this stock. Um, now we're giving up because that's what we do with these model portfolios. After 90 days, they come off. Um, would, they, would this one go back on? Eh, probably not. If it did, it would probably be in the aggressive um, because to me, taking a shot like this is very aggressive. Um, let's go back and see. Come on, there's gotta be one here. Well, I think we've got some more recently. Let's go into the, this one. And Roku I put on the list as well, uh, even though had, that one had a nice day to day. Um, but Roku, to me, is in a great long-term trend. That's another one that from a daily perspective, back here in September, uh, that was scary. But I thought it was overblown. I said it at the time. We actually put it out for an active trade alert when it hit the support level. Um, and we played it up to the 20-day and just took profit in terms of the active trade to see whether or not it would get through the 20. But this one's been a pretty good one. I, I see a symmetrical triangle building. See the uh, lower high, potentially a higher low. Uh, I think somewhere this one could uh, continue to consolidate and then break out to the upside. And the reason I say that, again, let's look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart doesn't look bad. I mean, we just had such a huge run. It's okay to sell off a little bit. We're still above that 20-week moving average. So I think Roku looks pretty darn good. Um, and I do own this one right now in the portfolio. Uh, 
let's see. All right, I know that there were a bunch of these semiconductors. Um, I mean, UCTT was one of them. Maybe I have to go back a little bit more because I have added a lot. There's one. Cirrus Logic, this is a great one. I mean, talk about a bullish candle. And this, I'm going to show you a perfect example here on this one of how I trade with gaps. Here was an earnings gap right here. Do you see the top of this gap? Notice where we went down to. We never filled this gap. If you were waiting to fill this gap, you waited too long. It never happened. We held this gap support and then we broke out. And now this is the area of support again. I would not be surprised if we get down to the 60, 60 and a half level. I wouldn't be surprised if that's as far as we go. We might not even get to the bottom of this one. That was a huge volume. And look, that's very close to a Marabozu candle. I don't know if you know or you follow candlesticks, but a Marabozu candle is one in which you open almost exactly on the low and you close almost exactly on the high. So what it is, is it just kind of gives you this picture of buying all day long. Remember when stocks gap up, market makers provide liquidity. They're on the other side of the trade. That's why most gaps fill. When they don't fill, it's a pretty good sign that there is a lot of demand for a stock. And so when that stock comes back down to where the buying began, a lot of times that's as far as it goes. So Cirrus, this is one of those semiconductor stocks. Here's semiconductors breaking out. Cirrus now just set a new 52-week high. And you can see semiconductors relative to the S&P just taking off. Anyway, uh, so that's basically what I wanted to give you was just a little bit of a preview of uh, some of the things that we'll be talking about next Tuesday night. I will unveil the next 30 uh, stocks and um, it's going to be interesting because again, this last 30 days, uh, or excuse me, last 90 days has been very challenging. Anybody who's been in growth stocks knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I remember I was talking to uh, my former co-host at Market Watchers Live on Fridays, Mary Ellen McGonigal, and she, uh, she pointed out an individual stock to me, and I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think it was in the restaurant space. Um, it might have been Wingstop. And she said, you know, I mean, we, you know, when we put stocks out there and they don't work out, we feel bad about it. And Wingstop was one of the ones that she had had out. It was a great performer. Look at where it, when it topped in August. And so we were having this discussion the other day about how many of the growth stocks that were completely in favor in mid-August all of a sudden just fell off a cliff. Um, there was no support to be found and you know they keep falling. I think eventually they're gonna find some support and head back to the upside. But for now, it has been a very, very difficult market. Anyhow, next Tuesday night, uh, we will be doing this. It will be the top 10 stock picks for each of the three portfolios. Uh, I will say that even though we did have a rough last three months, we are still above the S&P 500 cumulatively since inception in all three funds. I uh, certainly hope that the next three months will be a lot better. And I encourage you to join me next uh, Tuesday night as we go over those stocks. So John, I don't know yep. if you uh, want to take over, but that's it for me. And remember, Market Vision 2020 coming up. Make sure you sign up for that. Okay, great job. I think uh, we're kind of running over a little bit. So there was a couple of questions. Uh, we're not going to be able to get to them, but feel free to go to our contact us page and you can send it and we'll try to uh, answer them all. Anyways, great job, Tom. And I uh, look forward to having everybody uh, with us next week. So long. Have a good night, everybody.